Some of the fish are still alive, which is good. Today is a tutorial on how to install MetaMask and how to get started on this new crypto journey. If you've been investing on Coinbase and that's all you've been doing, well, you're kind of missing out. And there's a big part of blockchain that is decentralized and you really begin to explore that once you set up with what's called a non-custodial wallet. So your Coinbase wallet, your Binance wallet, that is not a non-custodial, that is a custodial wallet. This one, we're setting up a non-custodial wallet. So what are some of the things that you're going to be able to do if you do then have MetaMask? Well, you're going to be able to trade lesser known coins or your smaller coins, which often has a much greater potential to actually go up. Yes, it has risk of going the other way as well, but it does give you a greater option. And it isn't just a position that you hold within the currency, like some of the exchanges might be, you're actually holding the currency within the blockchain. You will be able to trade on platforms like SushiSwap, like your PancakeSwap, and of course your Uniswap as well. And you can be introduced to what's called staking, where there's often really, really high rewards for actually locking up your cryptocurrency. There's all tokenomics around that as well, which will be introduced in another separate video as well. You're obviously gonna be able to mint NFTs and you're gonna be able to also trade NFTs on OpenSea. And more importantly, you can also play some cool games, you know, things like play to earn, where you get paid to play a particular game. And it all starts with having a non-custodial wallet so then you can then use that as your login for some of these games. Overall, having a MetaMask wallet is going to help you understand a whole lot more in cryptocurrency because you're going to be able to actually participate in some of the cool things that are happening in the marketplace. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So we're going to start off by just Googling MetaMask. Pretty straightforward. The first thing is what you're going to do. Any kind of Chromium browser, you can also download it on your phone as well. I'm just gonna press download now, install MetaMask for the Chrome or Brave in this case. You know, I use Brave, which is a decentralized uh, browser. And here we are at extension, pretty straightforward so far. If you've never added an extension before on Chrome, a new download will start at the bottom. You just have to double click that and away you go. So today we're gonna create a brand new MetaMask wallet. This this is a wallet here, guys. So once you do that, everything's automatic. I haven't clicked on anything else. Just gotta press get started. There are two options. You can import a wallet, which you'll be able to do once you have set up a new wallet. If you don't have a wallet, you can obviously create a new wallet. When you create a new wallet, I just press agree. Um, you set up a password. I have read and agreed to terms of use. Press create, and you're gonna be given a 12 seed phrase. So we're going to then press next. And here we're gonna to press to reveal our secret words here. Now, I'm just going to burn this wallet, so I don't really care if you guys see these words. And these are 12 words that you have to keep, okay? The fact that there are seed phrases and setting up these wallets, there are thousands of wallets out there, just like MetaMask. And depending on the blockchain that you use, you may need to use different wallets. And all of them operate on a similar basis, that they have a secret recovery phrase, which you cannot change at all. If this gets, you know, compromised, you know, you're done. So everyone can access the wallet, you know, everybody's seen the wallet, don't even bother trying to recover it, or you can't change these secret phrases at all. So make sure you keep this. And also, when websites do ask for secret recovery phrases, just be very, very careful putting them in. And if it does go in, make sure it is the right domain, that it's not the phishing website, because once it goes into it, a fake or a similar domain that people have made to fish on you, well, then you're gonna have what's called a compromised wallet, which means that every time money comes in there, they're gonna get a notification and they're just gonna come beat you to it and then just take the money out of there and, and then, you know, ship it off to another wallet address. So it's very important that you keep this safe. And of course, you need to keep the sequence of the wording right as well. So I'm just gonna copy this, and this is not very Best, best practice, but I'm just gonna copy this onto my notepad like this in that in same order. I'm just gonna press next, okay? So I'm gonna have to put the phrases in order to make sure that it is correct. I'm just gonna do this quickly, okay? Press confirm, congratulations, all done, okay? Awesome, and that's your MetaMask right there. Once you've done that, go to the extensions tab right here and make sure you just pin that to the top so that you can see that little fox at the top. And once you have that, pressing the fox will then drop down your wallet and then Bob's your uncle, here we go. So once you have that available, if you go to exchanges like SushiSwap, you enter the app. Uh, once you've entered the app, you can then connect to a wallet. Uh, you're gonna press MetaMask because that's what you have. And then a pop-up would like appear like so. Uh, and then you can just press next and connect. And then boom, there we have it. Your wallet is now connected with this exchange platform here. And many websites will then have those connect buttons. So if we look at PyDAO, we've got a uh, connect wallet there. If we've got a Binamons and you'll be able to connect your wallet here as well. My website here for my NFTs here, when you wanna mint NFTs, you will then need to connect wallet as well. So going through what's available in the wallet, at the very top up here, that is where you can choose your networks, right? You can add different types of networks in there. It's gonna come with default as Ethereum, but we can add exciting networks like Binance Smart Chain, which has a lot less gas fee than Ethereum does. And then of course you can have Polygon networks, your AVAX network and things like that. And the best way to do it really is to edit through as a customer PCs. Then if you wanted to add those extra networks, you can just type in Binance 
Smart Chain, MetaMask, Custom RPC. I don't even have to spell it correctly. And then if you just open that up, you will be able to see some forms that you will need to fill out. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So mainnet, this is the one you are going for. You open this up, you open the MetaMask up, press that uh, drop down, Custom RPC, and you'll be able to just fill those information out directly. But doing that is much, much time consuming. It was not entirely time consuming, you just gotta type these out. So instead what I do is I go to a website, go to, go to a platform like this, and then just press all these different networks here. I wanted to add Polygon, press that, then it will then change to that, switch to the network, and it will just bring those exact same networks, press switch network, and you've basically added the Polygon Matic network. How do we know we've done that? Because we just go to the networks at the top, it's just switched to Matic and we've just added those custom RPC. It basically automatically feeds all of that in there. Some of the major networks you're gonna wanna have is obviously Ethereum, Polygon, BSC and Avalanche as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add all of that in. Press approve, switch network. So BSC is now added in uh, and lastly Avalanche. So it's important that when you visit a website that you know what kind of blockchain it operates in. So for example, under OpenSea, if you, you know, this is predominantly Ethereum based website. So if you go to explore, then it wants to connect to your wallet. So you got to press MetaMask. Okay. So what happened there is a really, really interesting example. It just detected that there is a phishing attempt on this website. And that's really important that was detected. I didn't expect to actually come out on this video, but the website is open sae live which means it's it's incorrectly spelled this is a phishing website which which i shouldn't have shown you guys so it's open csea.io which is the correct website see it looks so bloody similar so just be really careful when you guys do come across these phishing websites i obviously just googled open c people will, will run ads to this and google will even allow to do that which is freaking wild so just make sure that you're going to the official our websites and you should be okay. Now I'll be connecting to MetaMask. In this case, MetaMask isn't going to bark at me. It's just going to be very happy with it because OpenSea is a very, very common application. And we're gonna go back to the Ethereum mainnet um, blockchain so that everyone knows what's up. And in here, you can see that I have nothing. When I explore NFTs, you know, I can see a lot of them are selling in Ethereum. That's an Ether price. You can buy your Z run and things like that. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is for you to then start trading or doing anything with, uh, with MetaMask and actually work with any currencies that you might have, you need to make sure that you have gas fees available in their native token. So if we're in the Ethereum mainnet network, we're gonna obviously need to have some Ethereum. If we're in the Binance Smart Chain, we're going to need some BNB, Avalanche, we're going to need some AVEX. For Matic, we need, we're going to need Matic. Now, I know a lot of you have heard about Solana and I know they have their own blockchain. Well, Solana uses a completely new wallet system and it works quite similar to this. So there's really nothing to be so afraid of when it comes to installing new wallets as well. So Solana has their own wallet. They call it Solids, right? And, and under the Solid category, there is a very famous wallet called Phantom, which the operation is very similar. Should you request a tutorial, I'm happy to introduce you to Solid as well. What we're going to do is we're going to throw some Ethereum in, into the wallet. I'm obviously not gonna do that for this wallet because I've already shown the seed phrase and I'm not gonna be using this at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to then get out of this wallet and then install my own wallet in there and I'm gonna show you how we can then start depositing Ethereum money in there so that we can then begin to start trading and making transactions, whether that's buying NFTs or what, what have you. So a lot of tutorials don't cover this. You may end up having multiple wallets. Okay, so what you're gonna do is then just go to press lock. Uh, once you've done that, you will have this welcome back screen and what you're going to do is you're going to import your using secret recovery phrase so when you're hit with this uh, page you're just going to put your recovery phrase you're going to write it out and you're just going to place a space after each word and you can just press your secret recovery phrase so that you know you haven't made a spelling mistake i'm just going to do that off screen it's looking all good it says new password but you can still put your old password in there effectively what they want you to do is set up a new password every single time you put a secret recovery phrase in there but there's no problem with setting your old phrase in there. So in, in the previous case before, I could put in one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and that'll be entirely fine. So there you have it, guys. I've just restored my wallet. This is just one of the wallets that I have. I've got 15 ETH in there. So with that, what I'm gonna go to is I'm gonna go to OpenSea.io, and then I'm just gonna connect my profile and my wallet to this website, press MetaMask, and I'm just going to press connect.
and we'll be able to check all the NFTs that I hold. Within that, um, as you can see, I hold a horse uh, within Z Run. So that's what I will need to have to then be able to buy and sell this horse. So I'm gonna load up, get, a, get another wallet, and I'm gonna then teach you how to then put money into the account. So let me hop out of this account. So I'm gonna press this circle here. I'm gonna press lock and I'm gonna import using secret, secret recovery phrase. So now here is my wallet at the moment. So what I'm going to do with this wallet is that I'm gonna then put some ETH into my wallet address here. Best way that you can do that is you can just press the asset class and then you can press buy. And then there's all these options available here. But what we're gonna look at is how to then transfer, directly put in Ethereum into this wallet here. One of the ways to do that is you can buy with these uh, transaction methods here. But what I like to do is then use your existing centralized exchanges where the transaction fees can be a lot lower. So when we use credit cards and things like that, then it will charge, you know, extra dollar or two. And it's kind of annoying when you need to do it. What I'm about to show you is a transaction within the ERC 20 network, which is another name given for the Ethereum mainnet that you're seeing on the screen. The two exchanges that I used to then actually put money into MetaMask is uh, one is Binance and another one is Kraken. The reason why I'm introducing you guys to two platforms today is because Binance is really good in that. It has become the biggest exchange that whatever is available within your country where the transaction fee between banks is completely free. So I'm from Australia, we have what's called OSCO. It's instant and it's free. I think the Europeans have like e-bonds and things like that, which is again, it's free as well. So there are not many exchanges that have made their way into the regulatory regime as far as being able to, you know, allow those native, you know, most bread and butter transaction methods available within the uh, within the country. So what I have discovered is that Binance and Kraken does offer those very native transactions. If you don't have those native transactions, then you know any other exchanges will then allow you to buy cryptocurrency using credit card and things like that. Coinbase is one of them. But when you do buy crypto using Coinbase and things like that, well, you will be expected to pay a transaction fee on your master or your visa card. And those can be, you know, you know, around, you know, five percent so i think i've seen it as high as five percent if you invest hundred dollars you can pay a fee up to about five dollars in coinbase alone you'd be paying three dollars up to a thousand dollars and things like that it's not particularly conducive because we're trying to make those five percent gains and if we lose them on transaction fees in trying to buy the cryptocurrency in oven in itself then that's a big problem so what we're going to do is um i'm going to introduce you to binance um and how that's available and also uh, on Kraken and how that is available. So I already set up an account on Binance and Kraken. If you haven't done so, um, it's not uh, particularly hard to do. And all you have to do is once you set it up, you can use your phone to set it up or you can use your uh, whatever you want to use to set it up. Once you've done that, just make sure you log in. And the way I'm going to log into Binance is I'm logged in on my phone. So I'm just going to scan the code on the screen. And voila, I am just like that, logged into the computer. Bear, boom, there we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to then buy crypto now. So once you've logged in, you're just gonna press buy crypto. At the top, you're gonna pay using AUD, uh, you, which is where I'm from. So if you're in, you know, wherever else you are, just make sure that currency matches up. Then I'm gonna press bank deposit because that's the cheapest way to transact. So I'm just gonna press bank deposit and I am going to then use, you know, pay ID, OSCO, whatever. I'm just gonna chuck an amount and that amount doesn't have to be anything serious. Like I'm just gonna chuck in 200 AUD, press confirm. Okay, uh, blah, blah, blah. If this doesn't happen to work, then I think there's a $3 fee, but it will probably work. So I get what's called a pay ID, uh, which is just a payment uh, mechanism available here in Australia. So I'm just gonna copy that. And then from my bank account, I'm just gonna transfer that through. Give me a sec to do that really quickly. So I'm just pressing pay now on my mobile phone, um, a by web transaction. And you know, it's, it's an OSCO payment. I've just pressed it now and it's probably already made its way in. So the way to check is you just go to wallet, fiat and spot like so. And then you're going to then go and check your fiat balance because AUD is fiat balance. There we go, there's your 200 available straight away. And what I'm gonna do is then, now I'm going to convert that um, into whatever I wanna convert it into. Now, I want to have Ethereum in my MetaMask wallet, right? So for me to receive more Ethereum in my wallet, I need to send Ethereum from this wallet here on Binance. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to then convert that into Ethereum. So I am going to, then not all pairs are available, but because Ethereum is a very, very big coin, you are going to then 
be able to convert easily from your currency to Ethereum. And I, and I wouldn't know what, how many currencies won't be able to do that. I'm gonna preview the conver uh, conversion rates and I'm gonna click that reasonably quickly. If, you're, if you time out, then it will need to recalculate because obviously Ethereum is a volatile asset, so it's gonna move up and down. So once you have done that, you're gonna go into your wallet. And once you're in your wallet, you're gonna see that now you have Ethereum instead of your currency that you've deposited with. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna press withdraw. Once you press withdraw, this is the screen that you're gonna get. You're gonna press the coin that you'd like to transfer. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your MetaMask wallet like so. You're gonna press this bit here, which then copies your address to the clipboard. That's your address there. And make sure that you are in the Ethereum mainnet as your network. Although in every other network, the address remains the same on MetaMask, which is a very, very convenient and sort of trouble-free feature for MetaMask. But anyway, you copy that address under the Ethereum mainnet, which is a good habit to be in if you're trading currencies within the cryptocurrency networks. Uh, and you're gonna press that, uh, press uh, control V, paste that in there into the address bar. And once you do that, you're gonna press the Ethereum network. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna press Ethereum and the fee is 0.005 ETH, which is $23.04. That's right, you heard me right, guys. It is extremely expensive to trade on Ethereum, but you know it is the most commonly traded, I guess, non-custodial blockchain. So we're gonna do that. And as you can see, the fee for transferring within the BSC uh, exchange is a lot lower as well. So good thing about you know Binance and Kraken, those are called centralized exchanges, is that you can actually export any token to different blockchains, which is very, very interesting. Whereas the non-custodial, you actually have to be very, very regimented on the blockchain that you are trading under, or you'd have to use a bridge then to grab one currency from one blockchain to another blockchain. So be very careful uh, when you're approaching this, but since we want the Ethereum under the Ethereum network, we're gonna press the Ethereum ERC20 network, and yes, we're gonna cop those high fees. So there we have it, guys. And that, I think, is just gonna come out of the balance of the Ethereum. So it's, you don't actually have to have another currency like AUD or USDT to actually cover that at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press maximum um, amount of Ethereum that I have in here. I'm just gonna double check the addresses and the network before I send, and I'm just gonna press withdraw and then press continue. Okay, then obviously it's gonna ask for a phone verification and your email verification code. So I'm just going to grab that now. Cool, and once that's complete, it's gonna take about three minutes for it to land in my MetaMask wallet because that's how long they said it's gonna take. So one good habit to check up on, especially on a slower network like Ethereum, you know, you can see that I've made some transactions in the AVAX and the, um, the Binance networks, they're like almost instant, but Ethereum is a bit slower. Once it is under processing, you're gonna press the button here uh, and you'll be able to see the TXID section come up. Um, you're gonna press the link button here and you'll be able to see where the, the transaction is at, you know, you know, how long it's taking to actually get there. The transaction fee was only $13, which is really great. That will fluctuate throughout the day as well. I'm just gonna check on my MetaMask here to see if money has come in and boom, there it is guys. So my Ethereum has landed and here is enough money to then be used as gas fees to do whatever I need to do out there. And that's pretty much it. To actually give you guys a bit of a tutorial on Kraken. So with Kraken, um, the same, the process is quite similar um, and the same payment methods are available. So we're only using centralized exchanges like Kraken and Binance because it makes it available for you to use your native transaction methods to minimize your transaction fees that come from using credit cards, right? So here on Kraken, when you're under buy crypto, you can see you can also deposit Australian dollar via bank transfer. So we're obviously gonna use that uh, option. Uh, so we're gonna press deposit and I am going to then use my national currency and I'm gonna use that to deposit a certain amount. Let's say I press $100 in the bank transfer and OSCO is the available method press enable, whatever this may look like um, as an available within your country. Well, we've got all of these details and we can just, you know, chuck them straight in there. Uh, it looks like pay ID is unavailable for those interested. So in Australia, Binance is obviously an, an available method. And of course, if you live in the United States, I'd say this is a much better way to actually deposit, you know, convert your dollars, your American dollars that sit in your bank account into cryptocurrency that's available on the decentralized wallet system. So, so what happens now is the fun part of cryptocurrency. You know, we can go on exchanges like PancakeSwap, again, making sure that it is the correct website. We can connect up our wallets in there, press MetaMask, and then it's gonna come up with a little one blue tick. So all Always pay attention to that one blue mark there because it's saying that you need to action something in there. Uh, you're gonna obviously switch network to Binance Smart Chain because PancakeSwap operates on the Binance Smart Chain. So if you go into Binance Smart Chain, you'll see that I have a completely different set of assets. Like I don't have Ethereum and things like that anymore. Uh, so that's really interesting. So you come down here, you can press trade now 
and you can you know trade you know um, BNB into all sorts of other currencies that you've never heard of like safe moons available here and all sorts of cryptocurrencies you can manage tokens you can you can add a whole bunch of new tokens and then once you've done that there are so many cryptocurrencies that you can buy obviously these are not available on your you know kraken and things like that so i get asked a lot of questions from people when i make a TikTok video or something like that they go where do i buy this uh, and especially if they're less known tokens then it's hard to find where you can buy those from so probably not in the top 100 tokens that we see here but if we went to a, pro a, a much smaller coin let's just pick a coin uh, let's say this coin Xeon that nobody's ever heard of with 82 million dollar market cap we don't know where to buy it from if you scroll down the chances that it's probably not listed on any um, um, centralized exchanges although it is uh, Hotbit uh, which is interesting see all markets see where else it's available okay bad example sorry guys we're gonna we're going to open some other um, examples, but nine times out of them, it's going to be available on Uniswap, SushiSwap, PancakeSwap, uh, and things like that. So let's have a look at Velo. Um, again, I haven't done the research into this coin, but you know we can see that it's available on, okay, on many centralized exchanges. Okay, that's really cool. But okay, let's choose a let's let's just choose M MTV Multivac. Okay, so Multivac is. Where is that one available? Um, so we look at, you see that? It's, it's available on PancakeSwap V2. Um, and so what we can do is we can go to this exchange and we look at MTV. Okay, it's not found. Uh, if it's not found, all you're gonna do is see, you never stop. So you, you, you can just press that link from there straight away and it would just uh, load up. Uh, no, it doesn't do that either. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna come and grab that contract address here. Uh, press copy address. Uh, and I'm going to come to exchange, select currency, and I'm going to paste the address in there. And it's not found because that is an Ethereum contract address, but that is on a that is on a Binance exchange. See, technology on cryptocurrency still is a little bit clunky. So how I would buy this cryptocurrency will be one of just one of the centralized exchanges like Qcoin and Gate, which obviously has a wider suit of um, cryptocurrency that you can purchase. But although if you wanted to then keep it decentralized so much so that you wanted to buy it on PancakeSwap, then you will need to chase that up. On this but the contract address, which is not available, uh, is a problem. So what I'm gonna go to is I'm gonna go to CoinGecko. So let's say we were trade, we were chasing down MTV. This is how I would go. So I'll look up MTV here, open that baby up. Let's actually check where it is available. Okay, so it's, it actually is not available on, on PancakeSwap. So what I'm gonna do, okay, let's choose another coin because you know it's not like we, it's impossible to get that coin. You can just go to Qcoin and grab them, right? Let's go IOS Network, which is a good cryptocurrency. It's available on PancakeSwap V2. So we're trying to use our MetaMask wallet since we created it, right? AOS WBNB. Oh, actually, let's just grab the contract address. Oh, here we go, Binance Smart Chain address is here. Okay, maybe that was available for MTV as well. So I'm just obviously gonna copy that contract address for this token. I'm gonna come, come here and I'm gonna press Control V, AOS Network, I'm just gonna import that. I understand import and then you can convert whatever currency you have with you know, the token and that will land within your wallet address as well. When it does land within your wallet address, you will not be able to see it on the token list. So what you're gonna have to do, you're gonna have to import tokens and you're gonna have to paste that same address uh, and if you've done it right, the token symbol and the number of decimals will, uh, will populate automatically. Press add custom token, and you will then be able to import those tokens and you'll be able to see how many tokens that you have so that you can see it within your wallet here, guys. So that is a pretty comprehensive tutorial on MetaMask and how it works. Um, once you under wrap your head around this, that you, know, you, you understand your seed phrases, you understand um, being able to then log in and out um, using those seed phrases and passwords, and of course, being able to interact with that and the centralized exchange so that you can actually import money into that uh, decentralized wallet address, your non-custodial wallet like, like the one I have here. And of course, you will then be able to then trade sort of less known cryptocurrencies on these decentralized exchanges like PancakeSwap, SushiSwap. And of course, you'll be able to then do staking on other exciting networks like Avalanche. So the one that I have introduced recently on my TikTok page was Time Wonderland. So I'm just gonna Google that and I'm just going to go to, you know, the first link. I'll make sure it's not an ad. I'm just gonna enter the app. Um, it's gonna connect to my MetaMask, but on the Avalanche network because Wonderland is an Avalanche network platform. So I'm gonna press MetaMask. It's gonna come up with that little blue, blue one tick there, or it might just pop up depending on the machine that you use and how your computer is programmed. And then once it then connects up, I will then change it to Avalanche network like so, uh, so that it matches. 
I've got these two ticks in there. One of them, oh, that's you know my my one of my other tab is still requesting that it then connects to it. And as you can see, uh, I have uh, I am staking uh, my time token, and you know I am getting some pretty crazy yields on it, like at eighty thousand percent APY. And these are some of the exciting things that you're able to do. I well, will make a tutorial video on this separately as well. Oh, another exciting application for MetaMask is something like DownMaker. Although it's not really available for people who are in the United States, you can get behind IDOs as well, which is another fantastic thing because often IDOs then carry massive returns, as you can see on this website. And obviously, if you are in the United States, there are other IDO and launch pads that you can get behind as well. So don't be too disappointed. You just have to do a bit of research and see what kind of platforms are available out there. I talk about DownMaker because I've had a lot of successful trades within um, DownMaker, making these really positive returns as well. So guys, that was really big. But that is how you set up MetaMask. Uh, this is only the beginning, guys, and I will show you how then MetaMask is used. And this will be the video that you will then come back to so that you understand how MetaMask works. You know, depending on the request, I'll make a video on, you know, the Solana wallets and other exchanges as well. Let's see how this video go. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave the comments down below. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Make sure you go like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.